Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Everything you need to know in order to create a high converting product page design. Now, the goal of every coach, consultant or small business owner is to get more clients and customers and also generate more revenue and grow your online business. And I'm assuming that's the goal that you have and that's what you want to do to achieve your business. And that's the reason why you're listening to our podcast each and every day uh, in order for you to build a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But how can you achieve this goal? What is it that you need to do in order to actually scale and grow your business? And what do you need above all else is sales and how do you get these sales if your product pages are not actually converting and you're not driving traffic to these um you know product pages so and you know what you're gonna need basically is a good and detailed action plan with the right steps and you know that will help you take take your clients uh from merely browsing to actually purchasing from you and this would definitely guarantee you success so in what we try and do each and every day on this podcast is to teach you exactly what you need to know about scaling and growing your highly profitable and widely successful online business and we're using a four-step system that will help you uh, go from merely surviving to actually thriving okay So I know and I understand as a coach, consultant or small service business owner, growing your own business is tough. You know, maybe you're cold calling potential clients each and every day and you're having them hang up in your face or you're sending out hundreds of emails without getting as much as a thank you for reaching out or you're wasting thousands of dollars on ad spend without even generating any qualified leads okay and sometimes it may just feel like no one actually wants to buy what you're selling and then you you know and and it's a it's a tough one when you actually rely on your business to maybe pay rent and put food on your table you know it can be an enormous strain on your emotions and your well-being and you're terrified that you know you're gonna have to give up on your dreams and maybe eventually return to the safety of a nine to five job. And I'm saying this with almost love and respect, but maybe the one thing that you might need to do is actually just create converting uh, product pages that will actually um, get uh, and help people through your sales funnel and help them purchase your products eventually. Because your product page design can actually make the real difference to whether your customers convert or not. And in this podcast, I'm going to share uh, with you our top tips on how you can actually optimize your product pages there. Now, I've got a question for you. How many actual products do you sell within your business? Do you know how many products you're selling within your business? Because building effective and highly converting B2B uh, product pages is not as simple as just describing your product or publishing a page and hoping customers will throw their credit card at you and uh, buy you know as it depends also who your target audience is if you're targeting b2b clients or uh, b2c clients because business decision makers are now conducting much more research online before actually making any single purchase and even um, b2c clients are doing the same as well so your coaching it might be different uh, training or information or expertise or whatever event that you're putting out there or whatever commodity or product that you're putting out there. It has to be totally different and so unique and presented in such a way 
um, that is compelling to the end user. And that's why your product page design must be crafted to perfection. So if you're operating within the B2B space, these B2B product pages should follow nearly um, a, a unique structure, which is totally different to a B2C um, you know, uh, structure of converting a customer into a client. And although they both need to include details about your product, uh, when you're selling to business decision makers, these people expect you to provide them with more information that actually answers any key questions that they might have. So instead of optimizing product pages for quick purchases, your B2B product pages should actually nurture the viewer and encourage them to convert or take further action and find out more information. Because remember, when you're selling to a B2B customer, they also have a board or manager or a whole business to have to explain their purchase decision. So you want to make it as easy for them to defend your product in the boardroom as possible because no one was ever fired from buying from IBM or buying from Telstra. So as a coach, consultant, or small business owner there, you might be thinking, how can I grow my business and actually compete with the bigger players there? Because the biggest problem that you're facing right now is um, – Marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business. You need to be hiring new staff. You need to be balancing books. You need to be driving growth and a whole lot more other things. And it feels like a constant balancing act where you're actually pulled in multiple different directions. But if you have put together an optimizing sales page, you can actually leverage that. And so you uh, can actually start selling more to everybody else that lands on your website or that uh, patronizes your business. And the way to do that is you need to do your research, okay? Before you start creating um, B2B sort of product page, you need to leverage whatever customer insights to understand how visitors are interacting with your site. So you want to do, uh, you know, A-B testing because user testing is key to know what your customers actually like and what they find frustrating about your product pages or the website as a whole. And you want to ask your current customers to actually test your site, even break it. So you want to check out if it's actually um, coming out proper uh, on mobile sites or on, um, you know, on, on uh, iPads or other different screens that might be visiting your website on. Because we might be looking at our, our website from one single uh, screen, whereas when your customers are deciding to make a purchase on a product, they might be using a big screen in their boardroom. And if your website doesn't come out well, guess what? They're just going to put it in the too hard basket. And if you lost a sale just simply because you haven't done one more A-B testing, okay? So you want to ask your current um, customers to test your site. And do they actually understand um, what you do and what you're trying to offer as soon as they land on that page? And is it loading fast enough for them to uh, not wonder, uh, um, you know, or just um, think that their time is being wasted, etc. So, So they are... You know, you, you need to find out, are there things missing that they expect to be there? Is it obvious what their next step should be? All of those answers uh, you need to have in order to present a well-optimized uh, product page. And the purpose of a product page is to show, um, you know, these business leaders that what you're offering is actually the right uh, product and you're the right partner for them. And you want to convince them to actually buy it and that they're not making a grave mistake that would they will leave to regret. And they should actually answer questions about uh, what you provide and facilitate the buying process because these people, maybe it's a HR consultant or I mean HR representative or the accounts uh, manager within that business, if they are ever to defend your course, your training or your information, they need to have all the information that will help them facilitate this uh, buying process and all the answers should be answered. So just in case anything is asked off of them, they could be able to get that information 
right from the get-go. So if you know how your users are currently interacting with your website and the type of content that they actually enjoy consuming, um, which you can measure by using, you know, whatever KPIs you might have, you can actually start optimizing your product pages to appeal to those behaviors okay you do more of what's working and what's working you keep and what's not working you ditch you know you might be asking yourself <laughs> at the end of the day my real goal is to help my clients i don't want to be spending as much time as possible tinkering with my website or product pages i want to be spending as much time as possible changing people's lives and solving uh people's problems so in the process of you creating a product page, don't try and include too much because you want to give enough value to whoever's reading your uh, product pages in order for them to make a decision. Because sometimes it's actually tempting to try and include too much information on your product page. And when you're trying to write you know, this copy and you're describing your features and your benefits, it can be easy to actually get carried away. But I want you to remember this. People are much more likely to read through if you keep things short and sweet. So you want to avoid using certain words and phrases that are too big. Um, and basically, this would actually undermine your offering. And you want to make sure you're choosing your phrasing carefully and you're not using really big words that make your uh, customer or your client feel um, like they are being undermined or inadequate or you don't want to make people feel stupid so basically i would advise that you hire a copywriter who's actually skilled in crafting content you know for your product pages that are aimed at the b2b audience and they will also understand how to best use words to actually convince um, your visitors uh, of the value that you're offering. Half of the time, we are way too close to the product. And what normally would happen is we try and give people all the information, hoping that it will help them convert. So you need to include just vital information about your product on this page, but try to focus on condensing it um, down to just a few key points, you know, just enough for somebody to grasp what it is that you're trying to put uh, across, you know, and then you can then include a link to either download uh, a brochure or call your um, number so that they can speak to an ag agent for more information. All right. So at the end of the day, you don't want to bombard your audience with all the information um, you know, right from the get go, half of the time people are just in uh discovery phase, so they just want to have a high level, um, you know, approach to what it is that you're offering and if it is essential for where they're headed to. This is why you just need to showcase the features and benefits of your product right from the get go, okay? So, a lot of these uh B2B pages that we come across, they include a never-ending list of maybe product specifications and features but how many uh, people actually want to read that so your product page should position your product positively and emphasizing its um, standout features and the key benefits that you're actually bringing to your users lives remember you are out there trying to make your customers lives better all right so if you're a um, coach or consultant and maybe you're offering a uh, software product, um, be aware of the continuous, um, you know, integration. What what I mean by that is, you know, you, you, you're, you're putting out a set of processes and principles that only your dev team can actually understand and how they actually make the product's code work. All of that is gibberish to your end user. So it's important to work closely um, with, you know, with your customers to understand how they actually refer to your products uh, when they're out there in the marketing in in the marketplace. There, because the goal of your uh, product page is to actually capture people's interest and motivate them to take action and want to find out more about what you're uh, providing. So your training, your consulting, your information, and your expertise should just be put out there in a simple uh, amount of words and as descriptive 
as possible because much more of the content on your uh, product page should just answer the following questions. First of all, what's unique about your product? Because your product is swimming in the competition of me too products out there. And the customer is asking themselves a question, how will it help me overcome the challenges that they're facing currently at their work and how will it make their team's uh, job easier and what value will it bring to the overall business operation so if your product is not answering any of these uh, questions that are going through in your customer's head then obviously this person um, will find it very difficult for them to engage with whatever it is that you are offering okay so at the end of the day you just need to show people how your products and services will make their lives better in as much as we are giving value to our customers we also need to be directing them uh, towards making a purchase and that's the reason why it is very essential and crucial to be using a powerful call to action on your product page all right. So the call to action, which is maybe abbreviated as CTA, is actually the essential part of any landing page or any product page because it connects two vital parts of the lead generation process. First of all, it acts as the next step uh, to convert your visitor into a lead because more than 90% of people who read your headline will also read your calls to action. So you want to make sure that you are directing people towards uh, a certain goal and which is what um, you know people are there to be doing anyway uh, on your website so I think in a b2b decision making process it typically requires more communication and time than when you're just selling to customers all right and a simple buy now or get in touch to buy a product is not just gonna cut it you need to get people to uh, be comfortable in getting more information from you and uh, learning more about what it is that your product will do. And remember those questions that are flying through your customer's head. Um, they want to know how unique your product is and how it's going to help them, um, you know, um, uh, solve whatever problems that led them to come to your website in the first place. Okay. So a very good example for a B2B call to action would be uh, something along the lines of here is a 30 day uh, free trial. Okay. Because this shows that you're actually focused on uh, proving to your customer the value of your product and you're not all about just uh, making a quick buck. Okay. Because these customers often have longer customer life cycles than a B2B, um, you know, customer. And at the end of the day, for improved conversions on your B2B product pages, you just want to follow these um, simple tips. Keep the call to action text short and to the point, because that's the last frontier that you have in terms of communicating with your customer. Either they're just going to uh, bounce off your page or they actually click onto that call to action and then they move on to the next phase of your buyer's journey and you want to convey the value of that product you know through that call to action so you want to make it as compelling as possible and make it really stand out on the page so try and use maybe your uh, brand colors or oh, red is usually a really good um call to action color anything that just really stands out uh, from, um, you know, on your page. But some people might argue that red usually stops people. So you want to do your own research depending on the industry that you are involved in. And you want to also test out different call to actions and tailor them to your target audience and also uh, make sure that they are, um, you know, they have context as to what it is that you're trying to put out there. Because most Business to business buyers won't be ready to make a purchase when they land on your product page. So these decisions are often made um, through a high investment because you're coaching, you're consulting, you're training, or your information usually is not cheap. So you want to use call to actions that actually encourage visitors to do their homework before they make a purchase and make sure that you already have the content for them to consume and they're not going to use somebody else who already has that content for them okay so 
what, whichever way uh, that you are inviting people to go to the next step, either for them to view a demo, watch a video, or read a case study, or book a consultation with one of you, all you have to be doing in the call to action is encouraging um, them to take the next step and move further in their buyer's journey. Because at any given point, customers need to know that they're uh, headed towards, um, you know, some sort of uh, conclusion, which might then end up in them making a purchase of your products or the services that you're trying to sell to them. One thing that happens when uh, people are making B2B purchases is they want to know that there's not going to be too much of a learning curve uh, on both fronts, okay? They want to know that your processes are proven and they're not going to be um, having to be a, a, an experiment on on their own expense. So on the product page, you want to offer social proof in the form of testimonials and case studies because Social proof actually allows you to demonstrate the value of your product with real life evidence. Other people that are in the same industry and other people that have gone through the, the, the process or the product and they've actually got a good story to tell um, after the experience. So whether you choose to include either tweets from satisfied customers or Google reviews or case studies of other B2B uh, business leaders who've actually purchased your product, there are plenty of ways to get social proof right. And you want to make sure that it's authentic social proof. You're not just writing stuff just so that people can uh, be coxed or coerced to making a purchase of your product because that will backfire um, on your part. So as a B2B business, you probably have a page dedicated to your case studies, which is something that you need to be working on as that is uh, proof that whatever processes or concepts that you're putting out there actually do work. It's also a good idea to use quotes um, from uh, satisfied CEOs in other uh, businesses that are actually recognized by your future prospect and you want to sprinkle them around your product pages because this provide your leads with proof that your product has actually worked for other businesses and is helping them to be, um, you know, to to be, do and have a businesses that are profitable out there. And it will definitely show work for them if it has worked for other people. Okay. So you consider positioning this social proof um, usually near you know, other vital information of the page, you know, like maybe the parts where you put your pricing or where you put your call to action, because this is what will then help your customers actually um, subconsciously be moved towards wanting to work with you or do uh, something with you. And you want to make, ensure that your product page is designed and is actually optimized either for mobile or for different screens. Like I mentioned earlier on, sometimes when our customers are deciding to uh, buy our products. They're probably using a really, really big screen or they're just looking at your website uh, from a mobile device. So you want to make sure that your product pages are optimized for different screens and especially for mobile because um, I think it was the end of uh, 2020. This made up over half of the daily internet time that people were using um you know, uh, we're approaching the internet through their mobile device. So mobile optimization is now extremely important in the B2, um, you know, in the B2B arena, in as much as a lot of people are making purchases, um, you know, on Amazon and everything else, just using their mobile phone. So they are literally, um, you know, converting that experience uh, and also making purchases in the B2B world. So you want to ensure that your product pages are optimized so that business leaders and uh, decision makers can actually view them from whatever device that they choose to view from, especially mobile devices. And as more companies are, are adopting, you know, this remote hybrid um, workforce, websites need to offer some experience of, um, you know, uh, a mobile because your clients are probably, um, you know, in transit while they are looking at your product pages. Okay. And like I said, test uh, and measure whatever is working and also measure 
performance with KPIs to ensure that you are not just spraying and praying with your marketing, you're actually delivering uh, on your promise because your product page is the last frontier um, that actually, you know, uh, determines whether somebody is going to become your client or not. So whether you're promoting a software or email management so, uh, tools uh, to help maybe freelancers or big corporations, you know, maintain best practices in their recruitment or whatever they needing your services, um, you know, within their business. It is actually essential to continuously measure and test uh, your product pages if they are actually delivering on your promise. You want to keep track of key performance uh, indicators like time that is spent on each page, what the bounce rate is, and you know what sessions have been initiated and what has actually been clicked through their tools uh, like hot jar or any other heat mapping um, you know protocols that you can use out there because this now provides you with insights of how uh, your visitors are interacting with your pages and it helps you identify any areas that you might need to be improving okay so other performance aspects to consider is the actual conversion rate. How many people are coming to the page and how many people are actually taking whatever actions that you have put through with, um, you know, your call to actions. Um, although, you know, having a conversion rate won't always become a purchase. You know, the conversion might actually be just downloading a report or filling out a form. It's a good indicator of how successful that purge is in convincing your users to take the next step because that's all we want taking the next step so you also want to consider things like um you know your search engine optimization strategy um you know your ads all of those things that are driving traffic to the website are you bringing in the right kind of customer with the right kind of pain uh in order for them to um purchase from you or to convert and become a paying customer that pays stays and also refers because successful marketing uh leverages either seo and the way you actually rank up on google or other search engines so you want to analyze the keywords uh, on your product page and look for opportunities to add inbound links that actually drive traffic uh, from other areas of your website there, okay? And in the process, I really want you to convert more leads with um, these optimized B2B product pages because your customers, they're taking their time to research and actually compare products before they speak to you or any of the sales reps out there or making a purchase. So you need to optimize your product pages and actually educate them. And you want to answer whatever questions they might have and guide them towards a compelling call to action that actually helps them take the next step uh, in their customer journey. So you want to remember that it's not your product pages that actually affect uh, potential leads and customers it is actually you know how you optimize them and what it is that you're putting out there that would then convert uh, these leads into customers so when you combine with all your on-site features and um, you know have a live chat and you also have a robust uh, content marketing strategy your website will be equipped with everything it needs to be building trust among your audience and eventually uh, create for yourself a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So now it's your turn. I want you to discover how you can actually grow your service business, um, you know, by selling more of what it is that you love. And I want to save you a lot of time uh, right now because creating all of these pages might take a lot of time and you might not know uh, everything that is needed. Okay, just reach out to my team and we will be able to, um, you know, help you out uh, because we follow what we call the online prosperity method and it can actually be tailored to help any coach, consultant and service business owner to actually explode the growth of their business. And I can guarantee you that any coach or consultant can achieve the same mind blowing success that we've helped our clients to actually achieve and However, that doesn't mean that we're going to be taking just about everybody else. So we want to see what products you're putting out there. And if they are absolutely great, then we can help you be doing have um, a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Bye for now.
Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level www.community.livelongdigital.com.au